Welcome to the upstreamlife.com. I'm your host and founder, Vishal Krishna. Why are we doing this podcast? We're doing this podcast because I love entrepreneurs. I love entrepreneurs who are making impact. Today, I'm going to be talking about air quality and why it's important while we're celebrating the monsoons. You know, some people are loving the fog out there. Some people loving the rain. But let me tell you, 7 million people are dying every year from pollution-related diseases, all thanks to air quality, okay? Whether it's vehicle emissions, industrial smokestacks, or paraffin skulls in slums, you know, pollution, pollution, pardon me, pollution manifests itself across many Indian cities and is escalating diseases such as asthma, cancer, heart attacks, and strokes. Can you believe it? Can you believe that air quality has this kind of problem in the world today? So we need to create a repository of good air quality. We need to understand why we need a climate company that can understand energy consumption, air quality, and also give us data on global warming and help us make better, smarter cities. Let's welcome Madhusudan Anand, who is my friend, data scientist, and he's the founder of Ambi, right? He's also a CTO there. He's worked at Dell in the past, Avaya. He's also the co was the co-founder of Adom Technologies. He's worked with Aka Earth in the past. So Madhu, welcome to the show. Uh, I must say, I'm pretty impressed with what you've done in the last five years. Uh, let me give let me give audience a quick anecdote, okay? I was traveling to Delhi many times and, uh, you know, the government air quality index would show X, probably 150 particular matter, right? And when you really look at Madhu's data, it will show you six times that shows the pollution quality or the high pollution that exists in Delhi, okay? And it scared me to death that our children are subject to such bad air quality in today's world. We need to build smarter cities. Madhu, thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm sorry I had to just share that anecdote because it frightened the life out of me that time three years ago and it still continues to frighten me. How are you? True, thanks uh, Vishal. Thank you so much for having me on this podcast. It's a pleasure always talking to you. I'm doing great. Um, and I think it's all not you know, uh, bad, there is a lot of things we can always do. And especially when you have the right amount of data, right information, there's something always we can do. Tell me, uh, Madhu, let's start off with this. The, the reason I, the reason I fell in love with your company is because, you know, everybody, everybody looks at air quality as a measure, but you know, things have changed over the last 30 years of rapid industrialization within India. Give us some quick data points of what's happening. Where do we stand today? in terms of measuring air quality. And then let's get on to how your company has evolved to from that. Yeah, that's great. Actually, quite a bit of uh, things have happened uh, globally and definitely in India. Uh, we've become number one in terms of uh, uh, most populated cities. 22 out of 25 world's most polluted cities are in India. And that's not a great statistics to talk about. And uh, because of that, you know, once upon a time in 2015, um, that nobody were really interested in anything to do with air pollution suddenly have woken up in 2019, 2018. These were, these were important topics discussed in legislative assemblies and manifests of uh, political parties. So it's become that, that important uh, that the whole world is looking at it. So um, our pollution control board uh, also has evolved. Uh, they, you know, only from monitoring um, have also in, added a function of reducing and improving uh, air quality. Uh, as also one of the function by creating uh, national air monitoring program as, as well as national clean air project, clean air cities and so on. And along with that, there is uh, an you know, increase in air monitors. Uh, in 2017, there were only about 250 air monitors across uh, India. Uh, World Health Organization and a few other you know, researchers did a study and they said, if you have to monitor just the Indian cities, only the urban cities, tier two, tier one cities, you need 4,000 air monitoring stations. So that was a minimum number required for us to monitor. And right now uh, we are at around about uh, 800 uh, of these air monitoring stations across the country. And it's growing, uh, primarily focus being the capital region. Uh, but however, there's a whole lot more that uh, we are we should do, we could do, uh, we've just begun. So that is all ha that happened. But yeah, um, in terms of control improvement, uh, there need, still needs to be significant progress. We are still in the monitoring, collecting, and wait and watch mode. I think that it, there needs to be something more aggressive in terms of it, enough of these experiments. Let's take some things to action and actually take make that happen, make the reduction happen. You know, to save me from grace of quoting Delhi's data, you know, the WHO norms show it. 
Delhi's air is 15 times more polluted than uh, the WHO safe uh, safe uh, pro safe uh, data protocols, right? Which is at what around 25 particulate matter? Is that the number? Mother? Yeah, yeah, 25 is the safe limit according to World Health Organization, and Delhi is 15, 16, sometimes 20 times more than the standard of safe limit beyond the standard okay. safe limit. Yeah. Okay. Let's quickly talk about Ambi and then move into the larger problem. You know, I've traveled in China, I've traveled across the world, and I thought Beijing was very polluted. But then Indian cities seem to be catching up very fast, and that's scaring me. We'll get to that. We'll talk about why the technology is important. You know, when I met you earlier, you just started up and you just raised some seed capital. Uh, you, you were selling devices at the time. But a lot has happened since. Because you know, I lost track with you because of everyone's lost track with each other because of COVID. Yeah. But you've got. But the good thing is, you have forty paying customers today or more. Uh, you have evolved as a company. You've evolved as a data scientist, CTO, and co-founder, of course. Can you quickly talk about Ambi's journey the last three four years, and then let's get on to smarter city planning and how do we plan it with air quality? Okay. Sure. Yeah, that's right. When we met, uh, I would I want to call it Ambi 1.0. Uh, we were building monitors, air monitors. We thought, you know, there isn't enough data. People don't know what's going on outside, right outside their door or, door or inside their house, because it's just stemming all from my personal experience of uh, improving my own son's condition. Uh, because the air monitor was 15 kilometers away, the nearest uh, pollution control board monitoring station, and it was telling everything is 20, the good and safe. But the air quality inside my house was 800 uh, in terms of particulate matter. And that was what was affecting my son. So I thought this would be a, you know something that everybody would need, every parent and child would need. Uh, so we started making devices. But then quickly we realized we cannot solve this problem by making these devices. And it's like a Fitbit. People buy it for one week, two weeks, and that's it. They keep it somewhere on their desk or you know it just gets lost. This moment motivation is gone. So I didn't want this to be another piece of jewelry. So, and how would you even solve this problem? So uh, we, were, we were fixed on the problem, but thankfully we're flexible about the solution. So we started Ambi 2.0, where we started looking at data. So how do we provide this information without anybody having to buy a monitor, but across the world, street by street? So it became a data science problem. That's when I started using my data science skills. And I also learned a lot along the way. And then, then we built that. So we built that. Um, and we were, you know, grateful enough to onboard a lot of interesting customers, very interesting use cases. Every now and then, you wouldn't believe from real world evidences for clinical trials at pharma companies to building customer engagements to understanding sales demand, pay for performance, post drug surveillance, advertising and marketing, travel. All of these became some very critical use cases for which uh, we were able to make, you know, earn the dollars for by selling data. And then this became a, because we started solving both downstream and upstream problem, both consumers, individuals, as well as for businesses. And then uh, we realized, you know, we were in the, right in the middle of what's happening in this planet called climate change, because uh, air pollution happens because of emissions. Emissions are happening because of consuming energy and air pollution causes global warming. So we were right in the middle and we started spreading our, ourselves towards both the di dimensions and we understood uh, how climate is affecting and what's going on. And there came a lot of climate use cases from our existing customers. So we call it Ambi 3.0. That's where we are at right now. We've, we've also raised a, another round of funding uh, in between. And um, we are going after some large real problems, but still fixed on the problem of improving the quality of our environment and hence now the climate as well. Let's look at your business model in context of something that's very important, sports. India now is now saying that they'll produce some of the best athletes globally. Uh, it is saying that we will perhaps do well in Olympics in the upcoming one. You know, we'll probably increase our medal count because the amount of money pouring into India is phenomenal now. Right? We've seen what's happened to cricket. We see what's happening with badminton. We have produced some world-class athletes. We will be producing world-class athletes in track and field. But Mother, you have an important point to make, and we will set the business model in context of what you're going to say on why we are not going to produce world-class athletes from the Indo-Gangetic plane, at least because of pollution, right? And yeah. you have to tell me that. 
Doctor, I also want to show you, uh, draw your attention to something that I want to show you as well. Um, you I'll should, show you... please. Show me graphs, show us, show us everything. We'd love to see what's happening. I mean, that'd be live. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, do check out the hotspots that Madhu's going to show us on this podcast. You will be pretty much surprised that uh, there are forest fires, of course. There are, you know, fires emanating from farms. Uh, people are uh, burning uh, their fields. You know, this is pre-harvest, so in the post-harvest, pardon me. And there is a lot of uh, smoke that gets into cities because of that. And there's industrial pollution too. Mother, over to you. Sure. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to share my screen a bit here. And uh, I will show you uh, what's happening in on the ground. And and what, you know, especially, it's a great, uh, great vision to have. We are producing, there is definitely a certain thing. But, you know, there there is a whole lot more we could do, which could impact um, a lot better. If we don't, then that vision will just be a vision without execution. So what I have on the screen is a NASA's fire tracking satellite from a satellite called VIIRS, uh, and it has got a, a SOMI NPP, which is a, a geo-orbital satellite that's capturing all the heat anomalies fire it, it detecting. What you have is a map of India, as you can see, and this is the Indo-Gangetic plane. Okay, this was in the year of 2020 when the lockdown had happened. Let me go one year back. Okay, let's see 2019. And now you can see how the fires are increasing as I go through the day. Now, I, let me go to 16th of October. Now, you can see that these are all the red dots are all the stubble burning fires that have been detected around Punjab, uh, Haryana. And then this is creating a smoke plume. I, let me zoom in a little bit more. You can see this smoke. Now, all of this smoke is now slowly getting generated. Okay, it's accumulating. Now, as I go through, let me let me go to November 2019. Now, you can see the smoke has spread all the way. Now, this whole area has become smoky. This is the Indo-Gangetic Plain. Uh, and then more fires have started on the other side of the country. And now I go to December. And December is when, you know, the temperature cools down as well. Now, you can see all this white thing is smog. It's nothing but the smoke has been cooled down and there's a whole lot of smog. So, so it's not it's not fog even where people enjoy and say the weather's great. It is smog. Yes. I mean, most of them wake up on, on the 16th of December and, and they think it's the morning walk is beautiful. It's foggy, but it is not. It's dangerous. It's full of metals and chemicals, all sort of pollutants, greenhouse gases, you know, black smog. And there's a, a multiple, you know, there are chlorofluorocarbons, there are pans. There is a, a methane a carbon reaction that is happening with sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide. All of this is what is created the smog. Now, uh, what is this is in context of our country's vision. Now, there is another statistic that after 2014, India will have a majority of the population will have 30% underdeveloped lungs because of air pollution. So anybody born in these areas, right, in these regions, will have to really watch out for what they're breathing. I mean, I, I had to, as much as to scare this, but this data, this information is, is only as good as it, you know, you want to take it. But then I'll also show you what happens. This is very right scary now. for me. This is very scary for me. You're basically saying by 2050, we will not be producing athletes from this region simply because of underdeveloped lungs. And yeah. by the way, that gray, that gray matter on top is just smog. Correct. Absolutely. And oh, this is scary, December man. last year. This is 2021 last year. Now you can see all of this is the smoke, you know, emanating from all the fires across this area. And this, this gray, I can zoom in a little bit more. You can see the entire visibility of this region is gone. Now if I go towards Rajasthan, you know, Gujarat, for example, the wind direction is not, the Himalayas are trapping the wind. But you can see this is not as, as foggy. As this, you can see the gray area. Yeah, right? I can see it. Yeah, I right? can see that. And, and and similarly, you know, I could go towards, let's say, Western Guards it, uh, somewhere. This is not the case, right? Um, yeah. So these are clouds, actually. But mm -hmm. you can see it's it's a lot greener and, and clearer. But that's not the case as I move up north. You can see this uh, smog, fog, okay. all of this. Okay. And this blows, you know, air uh, winds shift. And it goes, comes all the way to Chennai. Suddenly in January, you know, people in Chennai wake up to a fog, but that is again smog. And then it slowly dissipates towards, but a lot of it is already damage is done and it stays for a longer duration. 
Okay, of, so, uh, sorry to bust to people's bubbles. People who are listening or watching this, uh, smog is real. Uh, you know, the data shows us it's real, but we seem to be, we, you know, Mother, I want to be talking to you about my career quickly, right? I've been covering such issues for the last 20, 22 years. I wrote about groundwater depletion in our country. <laughs> and there were, you know, there's always regulation in India. India is the best in regulation, most well-regulated country. But sometimes we don't, I mean, I know finance is really well regulated and we follow it to the T. Finance and taxation, we've done well. But in terms of these things, I don't know why, Madhu, why do we not care about such problems? I can see it in front of my screen. I could see the smog spreading in the whole of north and, you know, middle of India. And always, obviously, coming down to the eastern side, which is Chennai by January. Why do we take it seriously that these things affect our children? What, what is the reason, Madhu? Yeah, see, um, uh, the difference is uh, finance affects all of us. It's seen as something that affects our country, without which we can't do live without. The similar attention needs to be given to matters like air and water. I mean, it it's it can't be taken lightly. And and slowly things are happening um, at a very snail pace at the moment. There are some great things happening. But what happened is in every, any industry to evolve. You can't be the only party controlling, uh, you probably are regulating, but you have to be always opening up and collaborating with everyone and anyone who wishes to solve the problem as long as they stand within the regulation. Now, there are certain standards that we don't have right now, um, right? What is the air quality standard, for example, measuring standard, or what is a way of benchmarking standards? I mean, there are comparisons that you could do, co-location tests and other things. But how how open are we to uh, adopt low cost open sensor low cost sensors? You know, for a cost of one sensor, you could put a hundred low cost sensors, and that would increase our measuring and action taking. So if by ward by ward, if we have access of what's happening real time in terms of air air quality or pollution or what water quality or sewage treatment, all of this, then you know we could let's say there is a ward list of wards, twenty of them are in green, but a hundred of them are in red. How do you bring the red, convert the reds to greens? So who is who are the source of emissions? And why are they polluting? What's going on? Trace them to their sources and start taking action. That's what your regulatory bodies uh, are supposed have to be to doing. Do. So when you have policies and standards in place, then regulation comes in, comes in place. Anyone non-compliant can be removed, can action happen. So that is what is something that we are missing. Uh, there is a research team there. We have, we have IITs, we have you know, a lot of professors coming out, IISEs and everyone researching on a lot of these subjects have put out all of these things. But then the action when it comes to taking action, uh, that is something that we have to do. So National Clean Air Program is mandating this. There are budget allocated. It's just that we are doing it very slow. We need to accelerate okay. this. Uh, and China did okay. it. China did reduce their pollution. They closed out the certain coal plants. Uh, they fixed their landfills. Uh, municipality controlled by burning that they do, they fix them, right? That's the kind of things we need to do. Advise industries to go to a PNG, uh, which is another form of our natural gas, which and which industries can use, which is far less polluting. So in India, I also have a Sankey diagram uh, on the quick, uh, now that I am sharing my screen. This is India's consumption of fuel uh, in 19, 2019, energy consumption. The three biggest consumers are buildings, uh, number one is industrial, second is uh, transportation, and third is residential. Okay, well, I, I think I can see the only purple, green, and uh, sky blue, and, and obviously blue. What, yeah. is, what do these things mean? So on the left-hand side, these are oil consumption, all of fossil, you know, um, ones okay. that are causing emissions. Mm -hmm. Okay, electricity generated by um, coal, oil, this is pure fuel, this is direct coal con consumption natural gas, biofuels, and waste. Uh, these are the three, uh, four things. And the red ones are solar tide winds and other things, which are not accounted as emissions. But energy consumption, yes. But all of this, most of our emissions are coming from consuming electricity generated by thermal power plants, which consume coal, and oil products, which are nothing but your diesel uh, and uh, petrol products, gas as well. And then the coal consumption directly. A lot of steel plants consume both coal and fossil fuels as well and this electricity is another thing and biofuels is although you know there but biofuels lpg is categorized as uh, not categorized as biofuel 
So this is how uh, this is on the right side. Who are all the consumers of this energy? Are the industries? So if the, all of this group together is industrial, then this all of this is road, and then there is uh, buildings also under coming under residential because IEA cannot categorize Indian things. But anyway, there are buildings. Buildings also consume a lot of electricity. Majority of electricity is going to buildings, and this electricity is, is what is consumption is also emissions. And all of this is contributing to air pollution. Now, if we reduce industrial, if we shift industrial from oil consumer consumption to biofuels or to consume solar tide, our Indian solar tide, solar capacity is so high, but our dependency on that is so thin. This has to increase and be able to replace this electricity and a portion of this bio uh, of fuel and coal consumption. And, and then we have a way to act on becoming, you know, there's also COP26, India's commitment. There are large enterprises, Fortune 500, who have taken the climate pledge um, to be able to, able to reduce their emissions, to shift to renewable energy. Even for them to shift, there should be energy supply, and these energy supply should come out of renewables. If we take all of these actions together, right, it's an upstream, downstream problem. Both governments and corporations, everybody come together, we can act on it. For doing all of this, initiative has to be uh, large scale and then to take this initiative start looking at this data there's a lot of data now that's available with everyone i mean with many people who are looking to solve this problem aggregate them so you know our pollution control board is only examining satellite data for example uh, but actually consider satellite data is also one of the source earth observatory market itself is growing so start tapping into that uh, isro will be motivated to launch better monitoring satellites that give you emission data so then okay. there's a whole lot more vishal we can we can no actually... no this is interesting let's get back to your normal screen uh this is interesting i want to set the context now in what you raised our solar capacity is close to about thirty nine thousand megawatt uh as of last year i don't know what uh, this year's number number is you are saying that today coal and uh, coal coal and uh, other forms of uh, energy i mean basically we, we it has to be do we use a lot of nuclear no yes we use a lot of uh, coal but how much would be coal when compared to solar uh, today and and i'm drawing this in context because that's the reason why air quality is becoming bad in city correct absolutely here if i combine our fossil fuel consumption and coal and compare it with the solar you know that that capacity that we have or whatever we are generating is one is to one thousand, so that's the ratio. We use a thousand portion for every thousand parts of oil or coal is used, only one unit of solar is consumed, and that is a disparity that we have to bring. See, one is to shift is to renewable. Now you can't have just EVs and other things coming in into the road and thinking that it's improving our emissions or you know that's not the case. What about all that we have already created, polluted? that has to be decarbonized there is you know that that's also contributing to it india is suffering from severe heat extreme heat to all sort of climate changes real is happening you know bangalore is raining like never before it it was never raining so like this we have had floods i mean every year there are five disasters floods that are wiping out you know millions of crops and we lost eight percent of gdp to air pollution you know so that's the kind of scale that we're operating mother i want to draw this in context what what we spoke earlier, we set the context of no athletes. We're setting the context of saying that we are not going to have great cities because of what, what is happening. And moving electric is not the solution if you just look at it. You just can't move electric and say that, hey, we're producing you know, cleaner cities because we would still end up using thermal to charge our cars. Correct? Correct. So, so when you look at all this in context and you look at the ecosystem, you know, I'm bringing it down to your business model now. You you work with device device manufacturers. Uh, you are bundled onto their phone. They can call your data, right? Right. You work with companies directly, people who, and you work with governments. So when you look at this whole big picture story that you just presented, no athletes, no clean cities. That means unfit children. You know, medical bills will go up, right? Uh, we are not going to live longer. You know, it is scary. And the GDP, like you said, we lost how much to GDP, you said? 8% to GDP. So how do we fix this then? How do we fix this? 
that's what you know where our business model comes in actually so uh, one thing is always if you can't measure it you can't solve it so we're bringing a street by street real time live measurement of uh, what's right outside your door uh, to who, emission creating emission inventories sourcing you know um, uh, tracing it to an emission source as well as uh, in actionability to all of this uh, so uh, we are working with uh, governments as well we have received a grant to work in bangalore as well um, we are uh, beginning a research project we have associated with nasa uh, nasa is launching a, a high resolution low orbit uh, satellite called pace we are a part of that um, uh, satellite program it and it's got some very high resolution data so building this early warning system forecasting identifying source uh, and bringing out all of this intelligence to different type of people so this problem requires a you know people from every sector to come in now on one side we yes we we need to stay afloat so we commercialize this but the problem is all we are looking to solve so for example we tell the wards or the municipalities as to who is sourcing what are the who do we attribute this pollution to and so they can take action and at the same time uh, we are working with pharma companies to develop better drugs uh, for anti you know histamines for allergies and 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 we you know uh, respiratory problems and then on one side working with insurance plans there is one very very, very close to launching one air quality based uh, health insurance so uh, that's uh, that's something that we are working with as well uh, and then on the other side uh, there is something around that we are doing for individuals as to what they can do then we are also coming up with carbon reduction uh, you know uh, emission because we also want to uh, bring these and you know consuming you know, reduce the people's carbon footprint from individuals to organizations we are building one of the india's largest emission live uh, in you know the in the world carbon data does not exist a live carbon data is not everything is proxy data estimated based on energy consumption that i just showed you so if that's the case what's the on ground carbon footprint of a world and who are the ones who are co contributing to that footprint so this is what we are bringing creating we are also one india is one of the largest private air quality sensor network emission sensor network and weather sensor network with, with this insight we are bringing out all of this uh, data so you could start reducing your emissions on one side developing better drugs preparing people for insurance individuals can take action as well as government uh, has information so all of this contributes to the business model so who takes a call on this uh... I mean, chief ministers, prime ministers across the world. Of course, everybody talks about this narrative of air quality, and you spoke about ward level, ward level work. You're also talk about uh, talking about individual responsibility. Where because today, Ambi is available in phones, right? Yes. Uh, it, it, it's an app, or uh, is it bundled onto a phone where I just access a uh, app which talks about weather, and that's where. Uh, I access you, or is that how it works today? You have right. individuals using you, you have companies using you. How do you round this off together? Because you are collecting a data repository now, and you present it to whom in the end of the day? Do you present it to governments? Do you present it to industry bodies who then take action? Is it? It's a slow process in the end of the day, isn't it? It 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 is a process. Yes, it, there is a system we have to work with uh, anyway. So what we've done is, uh, you know, we industries are are not motivated unless there is a fine uh, or something regulatory swinging um, by on their neck so they would not be immediately prompted to take action but there are others you know um, for whom this is business for them this data is telling them where how they should be prepared how they should uh, as a part of climate action what they should do so there is motivation incentive in those areas they are taking action government uh, taking action our data is consumed by api you know, every time they ask data, uh, our data is available on phones, on most, uh, some of the weather applications also now have our data. We have our own data and it's all free. There's no ads either. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, that's because uh, we want individuals to also to take, a, take note. Um, and if somebody in their family is suffering, they should know what's going on. At least they move out of that place for some time until the person gets better. Um, I like what you said, you know, because you know, responsibility doesn't start with buying an air quality device, which is so elitist by me. I lived in Bangalore, you lived in Bangalore all your life, and we know that we know the air quality that we had when we were younger. Yes. And so you're right. So why have it? It seems life is always reactionary to the problem. Like we have these 
big devices from these big brands saying, oh, we have this air air quality device, you know, <laughs> and we are living natural air, breathing natural air, and it has to be purified now. That it is, it is certainly like a horrible science fiction movie, but I'm glad you're saying that you be responsible. You're telling governments to use the data. You are sharing it. Uh, it's, it's free. Where do I get this uh, data for free? I mean, if me as an individual, is it at getambi.com or, yeah, or is it, is it in a, an app somewhere? Yeah, you just go to your app store, iOS, Android, uh, look for Ambi, and you can download the data. You get set your, you get Poland alerts. I mean, you're also again India's first Poland. There was no absolutely uh, no attention given to Poland. Poland, uh, you know, is increasing. We have most of them who are suffering from allergies suddenly wake up to runny nose or or itchy throat. It's Poland. It's not seasonal change because of climate. It's actually Poland season, and that's what it's hitting you. And we all sort of alerts you get. Uh, as well as uh, things you could take action on. We don't sell anything at all, absolutely nothing. So that's our commitment to uh, uh, doing this, solving this problem. And uh, um, on the government side, there is uh, plenty that uh, we are sharing with them uh, in terms of reports, data analytics. In fact, the Pollution Control Board every year publishes their own report. Uh, and then they, there is a whole lot of actionability then. The actionability side of it, we fuel with a lot of data. And we published a lot of analytics on a lot of news media and papers. There is, we're definitely seeing some, uh, a lot of actions. We're also recently getting engaged with a research firm uh, very shortly, uh, uh, which is researching in the indo gangetic plane as to what are these sources, what we can do. So we are part of that, uh, they're consuming our data. So our data is scientifically hence validated uh, that it's scientifically viable enough for a research institution, a global research institution to use our data. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. I just want to quickly get this off my chest. Uh, the indo gangetic plane, it's mostly because of farm fires or is it because of industrialization? A mix or of forest both. fires. Yeah, it, it's a mix of everything. See, there is a uh, definitely stubble burning, we all know. And then there is industrial. So there's still brick kiln, still illegal, it's still there. Um, and uh, in, in fact, in the in the most of the indo gangetic plane, the, during winter, uh, there's a lot of firewood burning. Right. And there's also throughout the year, this happens because there is very little or lack of uh, gas penetration. LPG penetration is uh, abysmal. In fact, if you anywhere in, in Uttarakhand, you go, uh, you know, people are always burning firewood for their cooking, for everything. So all of this is contributing. Then there's a lot of uh, uh, stubble burning is actually an agricultural practice all the way from Pakistan to all of that wind come blows all the way to Bangladesh. So through that, it passes in Delhi. In Delhi has industrial, Delhi has vehicles. Uh, the, all of that region is, is fully, uh, you know, people are moving, there's transportation, there's automobile factories to uh, every sort of industry, you can name it. So they're all contributing to it. There's steel plant uh, in Jamshedpur to, uh, you know, uh, brick uh, factories and cement factories, the massive production houses. So these are all adding up. and there's, you know, this is uh, not that just that, and there's construction going on, building construction, road repairs, landfills, uh, garbage burning happening. And in winter, you know, you might, if you go to Delhi, ever visited in winter, you take a street out after 10 p.m., 11 p.m., you will see pe many people on the street are burning everything they can, anything and yeah. everything they can find to warm themselves. I've seen it. Then there is diesel generators. Uh, it's illegal there as well, but uh, people still use it in apartments. And there's, you know, whenever there's a power cut. So all of this, you know, our, our attitude, our, our, you know, chal, chal thing and nothing is happening to me. Uh, all of this is, is, is what is driving pollution in, in the region. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes we're like headless, headless chickens and, and it's, it is scary. And that's why you spoke about accountability in a, in a sense. We need to be a stack. We need to think like stacks and platforms and then bring about equity. I, I hope that happens really. Okay, now I want to move on to this question of you know, why should a pharmaceutical company work with you? Why should NASA work with you? And I'm glad you said as a startup, I need to get paid. So I do work with corporate. It is absolutely okay. So uh, talk about some of the corporate verticals that work with you and talk about pharmaceuticals. Of course, I am curious to know that you help them uh, using air quality. You, you actually help them make uh, better drugs. That's what, that was an interesting take that you just mentioned a, a few minutes ago. So I want to know more about that your NASA partnership and also the businesses that you work with. Sure. 
uh, so the different verticals that we work with um, are uh, uh, consumer enterprise companies, FMCGs, uh, food uh, companies, agri tech companies, uh, or or companies who have large farms uh, like tea and coffee plantations. Uh, we then work with pharmaceuticals as well. Uh, so uh, and then there is other companies like weather companies and travel uh, organizations uh, and insurance. So these are this is the base of our main top sectors that uh, perform. And then there is the other side of advertising and digital marketing. So these are some you know, cluster of companies that we work with. Uh, for in India, in these are global customers. Most of our revenues are uh, you know outside India as well as in India. Uh, so it, what's happening is. Uh, in india we don't have a you know a, a healthcare system where everybody's marked and numbered and the documents are stored and stuff so the missing medical records the only thing that is accessible to pharma companies which are actually now not only bringing the drug that was developed and tested and trialed in in, in us to india because india adopts uh, us's medical most of the medical procedures uh, even ima it, it's aware of uh, those practices they are locally also looking at the differences that are specifically affecting certain diseases, but the drugs are not fully effective, as effective they were tested in the US. So uh, to make them effective, pharma companies have access to a lot of NGOs are doing spirometry and other data. But along with that, what does the real world evidence look like when you are, because most of 80% of all ailments that happens to humans is based depending on the environment. Or the you know his lifestyle, how he lives, what he he or she does, uh, and and then what he breathes, drinks, all of it, of of course. So air being one of the parameters, air affects six out of ten diseases that fatal diseases that happen to humans. So that's where we come in. So they've done all of these study. Now they correlate it with exposure. Something we we are working with uh, some Indian uh, pharma companies is to study the exposure of a patient who is uh, been a long term. Uh, respiratory therapeutics. Then there are new age therapeutics that are coming, digital therapeutics uh, for asthma, for uh, chronic respiratory patients who have no option but to regularly keep visiting uh, physicians and continued therapies. Then uh, there is even diabetes exasperate, exasperates because of air pollution. So dementia to cognitive losses to diabetes is affected by this. If you have and, ever... and they pay you basis of uh, yes, every time. Yeah. Every time they uh, use the data from you, they pull the data from you. It's an API call. Correct. They, every time they pull the data, they want you know to study last five years of uh, this patient's whereabouts to understand what kind of environment he is exposed to, including weather, temperature, uh, humidity, pollen, air quality, based on where he worked, where he lived, where he traveled for last five years, and then create a picture of that particular person for the doctor, physician, to follow a clinical decision support system, a decision support as to what diagnostics he should follow. Uh, and this is endorsed by the pharma company. They use our data as an API call. So we've got 30 years of historical data of climate, uh, of weather, of all of this, you know, including a little bit of water, pollen, air quality. We've got this data and then we give a picture of it for one of the cases. Then there is engagement, advertising, uh, in yeah. our, our data app is integrated as a direct API. Our APIs are integrated in some weather apps, uh, other customer apps, which show them uh, pollen alerts and fire alerts and air pollution alerts kind of thing. You know, and, and NASA and the NASA partnership is to, you know, work with them to launch in their new satellite, of course, which is space, right? Yes. And when will that get launched and uh, what what is your association with them? Sure, we've been working with NASA for some time. Uh, we kept giving them a lot of feedback. Uh, they kept uh, a watch of what we're using, how we are consuming uh, their data, what are the gaps and shortcomings in their own satellites. And when they were launching a, one of the world's largest hyper hyperspectrometer, uh, very high resolution sensor, uh, they called us, uh, uh, you know, they opened up a, a few, few programs and they called, invited us. And we are building a micro air quality weather pollen monitoring and alerting system uh, with them uh, for india and for the world so uh, this is a low orbit called pace and uh, it will be in uh, orbit uh, by the 24 2024 january but until then there's a lot of simulated data uh, data from other satellites and a whole lot of structuring working architecting 
uh, is, a, is available. They have something called an application readiness level and you have to reach a certain readiness uh, level before the launch. So we have a, a you know ready solution uh, kicking off the moment it hits the orbit, the staff standing data. And we get first access data that in some cases from some satellites. Uh, we are also part of Airbus uh, Biz Lab. So space data has always been there. There is new technologies, new space in the Earth Observatory, blockchain, uh, metaverse, Web 3.0. So all of this is is new uh, things that are coming. So we're we're working in in order to bring these new solutions to all our customers, to the governments, to start using some of these things to take action on uh, a whole lot. And we are also moving towards becoming a climate tech company more and more and more. Air is one of yeah. them, but as well as everything else becomes a takes taking precedence over. Severe weather alerts, event weather, severe weather event attribution. Uh, it's a very big research topic, which we're again a part of NASA uh, to do these kind of things. That's our association with uh, NASA has been. What about ISRO? Why not ISRO? Yeah, uh, it's a great question, uh, Vishal. Uh, ISRO uh, has different type of programs, uh, but not a, a program as to partner. See, with ISRO, you have to take the tender way. And as a small startup, you know, it's very difficult to uh, go across a tender and we have to find a lobbyist, we have a system integrator and go after certain things. And and still, uh, NASA, ISRO data is something that we definitely consume. Uh, and, and they are also looking at this large market. And I hope in future days to come, we will be, you know, they will see our association, an Indian company selling something for the whole world for a large global yeah. problem. Uh, I think, we, you know, the doors would open up, such programs would come up very soon. We have been consuming ISRO data as well, not that we haven't. It's just that we have not been able to partner with them as their uh, focus also has been launching a satellite to orbit, not more so on helping people build solutions for specific problems. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you raised it. It's so true. The tender system is an albatross around all startups in uh, India. I mean, you have to go through that route to get to government. And I'm glad you use the word lobby is good. And that, you know, requires a lot of money and it's terrible. Uh, and, and, and rightly so, if anybody's watching this from uh, ISRO and if you know a way to get uh, startups like Ambry into the door, please do. Otherwise, we'll try the lobby is good. <laughs> Madhu, the interesting thing here is uh, you spoke, you speak so passionately about creating this data repository. Let's do two things here. Why go after this when you can make when you can make a lot more money building data science for a consumer tech company, right? As a CTO, you could earn crores. Why go through this pain of the last five years? I know you're building a good company now. Yeah. Why get into this madness? Talk about the madness. What types of data sources did you create in the beginning? How did you create it? The difficulty of that, and also why make this decision to work in such a company? When I say work, you own it, of course. Why do this? Yeah, Vishal, it's been, uh, I mean, it all started 20, in 2015. I've been at it since then. Um, my son fell sick um, uh, when I moved from Hyderabad to Bangalore. He used to wake up in the middle of the night, struggling to breathe, uh, which started as just simple cough, common cough and cold. It was turning something more, much more serious. And there was no data. Nobody was, doctors were not able to say anything. They were just following the medical procedure until one of them said it could be the air. So I put this monitor together uh, to see, because when I went online, um, there was no data. There's something that gave me was not near my house. So I had to build something for myself. And I, I everybody in the whole uh, uh, community, in my entire street, the whole apartment, the colony was suffering from it. Every housewife had some skin or a breathing problem or something else going on. Nobody were fully healthy, fit and you know, people who, in fact, there was a cardiac arrest of somebody who went for a morning walk. I mean, these kind of things are happening. And then uh, when I built these devices, I helped save my son. When I moved him to a place where the air was better, absolutely data was not there. Then when you put these devices on autos and just ran as an experiment, you know, being a research guy, I wanted to experiment and find out the whole world, you know, monitors data, right? There are several thousand stations in many countries and that data is, the number of, if you imagine an Excel sheet, every hour they track a record is one row. There are 11 million rows of data for the whole world for 24 hours. In, in Bangalore, when I put these in 40 autos, I had about 18 million rows of data for just one day and for just one city. 
and that's the scale of magnitude of data that I, I could gather. And then I could say what side of the road versus what time of the day, where could you go for a run, where could you take a child for a walk, living where in, in Bangalore, at what time, what would be best, what happens right after it rains. So right now I can tell you our air quality is as good as it is right now in Paris, I mean, uh, or London, for example. So right, there are times in parts in Bangalore which are as good as Zurich. Particular matter is less than 20. So right, this is how uh, I, I could gather all of this data. This motivated me uh, when I gave it to the doctors. They did a study. So one of the parents called and said, thanks for saving you know, my son's life. You improved her asthma condition three months later after we did this study and everything. Right, it's a brilliant uh, thing. That's when Ambi started. And, uh, you were not ambi then. You were not ambi when you saved that child, and you just saved, no, say, shared this data with the doctors, is it? With the doctors, and I gave built these devices. All the doctors said, "Can you make one of more of these prototypes?" I built these things and gave it to them. That doctor was so in the pediatrician, and their group of them from Narayana Hospital. They went to you know this place where this child was also suffering, and they looked at all the surveyed all of this. You know that they. Uh, that initiative, that call that when it, it came. And then there are 82.5 million mothers in parents in India who with children under the age of 10 are suffering from some respiratory disorder. And that number is alarmingly growing. And this was motivating enough for me to uh, dedicate uh, the time. I, in fact, I had got a, an amazing job. Um, I don't want to name the company, uh, but a uh, great job offer. And I was uh, uh, looking for it. And so much for that, Akshay Jaydeep left what they were doing were my co-founders. In, in they were in Europe, both of them left the, what they were doing to come back to India to build Ambi. And, and then onwards, it became a sense of gratification. Every member who has been a part, everybody who has given us support, uh, all our investors, customers, I think it, one more tech stars and Google Launchpad and other accelerators became a part of NASA and everything, right? It just, every time something goes down, bets go down, something great happens. And that motivation restarted, refreshed, we renewed and we come back into the problem. So that's how our story has been so far. And now, you know, we don't need to re reassurances. Now we know we have proven, we have made them, made a mark. Now it's all about uh, denting that, you know, all startups talk about changing the world or making a dent. And we literally are doing it uh, with what we're doing. So we're going to build- I like the problems. narrative. I like the narrative. You said you are, we are not an air device company. We are a climate change company, which is a whole different narrative and transformation I see in you. It's fascinating. And uh, did that happen, happen chance or did you discover it? And this is the thing about entrepreneurship. The persistence is what brings the narrative and the product and the real product out, right? Right. I mean, the Ambi happened to me, you know. So instead of building another, some probably I might be building something else which helps people hire uh, uh, profiles faster, another hiring platform or another delivery, something, you know, in one of this consumer, large Indian consumer market, somewhere I would have found my place in that. But instead, uh, Ambi happened was a calling, was a sign. I think we're onto something larger, much more real. And I could see my work's direct impact on people. Uh, and that's the beauty of entrepreneurship, right? What you do is actually doing something good for someone. And then there's, I'm a geek. Um, I, I love to see, use technology. And then that technology is able to make a difference in the lives of people. I think that was the biggest calling. And then we went on to onboard a few customers who have who are doing it for users. Now I can see, you know, I mean, millions now, millions of users. We have got over 250,000 downloads for our app. Uh, 100,000 of them are daily active users. And every day we're impacting them. Now we are integrating with somebody who is in, in world's largest uh, you know, OEM uh, in that sense. And very soon, two of the world's, uh, you know, capital, most highest phone uh, makers will be integrating this in their system. They see the value. I think that goes out to show uh, the passion and, I mean, uh, re reinforce that part where you, this is the right thing you're doing. I mean, there's no other award, there's no, no other recognition for an entrepreneur. This is it. And that's the greatest part. Now, I wish you all the best. Uh, are you still registered in India? Because if you are, you're great. Otherwise, have you moved, moved your IP abroad? A lot of people <laughs> move their IP abroad. Are you still in India? We are still in India, uh, Vishal. We're still fighting it out. But yeah, I think it maybe it also makes sense for us. We're not, I don't, I won't hide it. I want to be honest. Uh, we pro pro probably need to stay closer to the market, uh, not anything else. But we'll still have a base in India. But uh, 
we might look at uh, because most of our revenues are coming from those regions in the Americas and the Europe. So we'll have to get to one of those uh, places uh, very soon. <laughs> but um, we will we will see what would be the right thing to do. No, guys, uh, check out getamb.com, G-E-T-A-M-B-E-E.com. You, you can also download their app, of course, on uh, the Play Store. And it's on iOS also, right? Yes, it's on iOS as okay. well. So check them out and, you know, improve your air quality change. Uh, improve your air quality by tracking it. That's what I meant. And make sure that your uh, children are safe. Uh, you, If you're an athlete, use it too. I think, I think today we need to be... Um, Going forward and telling people in our apartments, maybe we need to proselyte, proselytize this whole aspect of living better. And I think that's what brings together as humans. I mean, if people can understand the problem at hand, uh, check out the data from Get Ambi, okay? And another thing, I can't let you go. It's not that easy. I want to ask you two things. What's your guide to happiness and the books that you're reading? It need not be those startup books. It's books that influenced you. It can be philosophy. It can be history. It can be science. It can be anything. Or you? Yeah, uh, in these days, I'm focusing on uh, implementing books than more quality than quantity. So I'm not reading a lot, uh, but I'm always reading. So there's this book uh, called uh, uh, Road Less Traveled uh, by Scott Peck. I think that's one of the nicest uh, books that uh, talks about um, you know fo following what you actually want to do. Uh, and that's uh, one of the books. Of, of course, there are a lot more. Uh, I also like uh, Robert Greene, uh, book called uh, Mastery. It uh, talks about many important things. Then talking about resilience and how do you uh, be better as a person, I think those are the most uh, important things. But, uh, you know, happiness for me uh, is, is uh, with all of this happening, with all this modern self-improvement and toxic hustle culture that's going on, the idea that's being repeatedly sold to us is you're not doing enough and somebody else is doing better. So you keep yeah, going. So you're not positive enough. You're not productive enough, rich enough, confident enough, successful enough. You're never enough. I mean, that's... And mentally, and mentally we are left poor because we yeah. have exhausted all our resources. Absolutely. Our so, mental faculties are really in trouble. I agree with you. I'm glad you spoke about the road less traveled. You know, Scott Peck's, you know, it was a best-selling book in 77, 78 when it came out. And, and the interesting aspect for me, you bring this book out because today we're living in a world of saying you are less of everything. Yeah, unless you do that extra mile, it's not the preparation that matters as much as you got to get there right now, right? It's Absolutely. scary. Yeah. So we have to go back to the roots, you know, uh, if it's a day, if, you know, if you think one of the signal is if you don't know how your days are rolling, morning you wake up and suddenly before you realize it's night and next you know, if you're thinking about the next day already, you're worried, you're tensed, you're not living in the present. You have to slow down, you know, go back to what it used to be when you were a child. So live in the present, stillness, you know, get back to that. Uh, it's not, I'm not talking about meditation. Yes, you can still do it, but you keep your life balanced. You distance yourself from noise and distraction. You move forward in baby steps instead of taking giant leaps and do one thing at a time. And then stop killing yourself in the name of productivity, having sleepless nights, don't do 20 different things and you know there's a lot of uh, also everybody's trying to sell you something and you are more obsessed about what next thing you want to buy how your money is so less how you want to save more I and mean, don't get into any of that just think of what it is right now you can do your best slow down a bit i think that's helped me immensely uh, especially there were so many ups and downs in building this company. Uh, context switching happens from where you're doing marketing, suddenly hardware, suddenly data science problem, people problem, investor funding. I mean, this whole customer sales, customer issues, so many things come in. If you have to cater to all of it, imagine the kind of stillness presence you should have. That's so, your guide to happiness. Be that's a, my guide be to present. happiness. Be, be present. present. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining the upstreamlife.com. This is Madhusudan Anand, the, the co-founder of uh, Get Ambi. I call it Ambi, of course. Uh, GetAmbi.com is the website. Go check them out. Mother, we'll have you real soon for another thing. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so much, Vishal, for having me. It was a pleasure talking to you.